Hello, I'm Carissa Kennedy. I decided to do my book on uh, The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. I chose this book because uh, it pretty much talks about Ebola and I was, I've was i always been kind of interested in viruses and things like that and I thought it'd be interesting to read because it was like a few years back or so people were talking about Ebola like it was a big scare. So this book pretty much covers events from up to early 90s or my bad, early 60s up to mid 90s. So, uh, what's wrong with me? My bad. Okay, so what is a hot zone? First of all, I mean, it is called the hot zone, so I'd probably start off by saying a hot zone. A uh, hot zone can pretty much be described as anywhere that is gen uh, generally high with infection or hazardous, that pretty much not not a safe or a good area to be in. Um, not hazard. Uh, what is Ebola? Ebola is a pretty much fatal disease. If you get it, you're pretty much dead. I mean, it's known it's a philo virus so there's like three of them that are in that group and it's it's just one of the three Thanks for Ebola so symptoms of Ebola um, fever pain headaches weak fatigue uh, vomiting abdominal pain unexplained hemorrhaging bleeding bruising pretty much all everything bundled up to one so I mean, it's not good to have, but those are the symptoms. So this book is kind of, it's pretty much set into four different parts. Uh, so first part, it, it takes place in Kittim Cave. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So there's pretty much this French explorer who decided, oh, well, I'm going to go out and explore this cave. And in this cave, obviously there's like, uh, or in the area at least, there's animals, monkeys, bats, birds. So he was, he was known by the locals to be very friendly and involved with the animals. So symptoms are, well, uh, symptoms started occurring to the explorer. So the explorer went into the cave. Seven days later, he develops these symptoms. So, you know, he stops, starts vomiting everywhere. Skin turns yellow. He goes to the hospital. Uh, pretty much just blood coming out of everywhere. So huge mess. Not good. So this doctor comes in and he's friends with this other doctor who is taking care of the French explorer. So the doctor who's taking care of the French Explorer, because he was working with them, he ended up uh, contracting those symptoms as well. So, you know, abdominal pain, back aches, red eyes. So obviously he doesn't want his friend to die. So that doctor ends up dying. Uh, they perform surgery on him. Come to find out that his liver was swollen. So one of the things about Ebola is like your internal organs will pretty much swell up, which obviously isn't good either. So. This is kind of early on, you know, center disease control kind of gets word like, hey, is there something going out there we don't quite know. So, um, a lot of the issues with Ebola is a lot of the doctors would just kind of write it off as, oh, well, this is just malaria. This is nothing bad. This is Marburg. It's, don't even worry about it. You're just getting sick for no reason. So that's an issue too. Marburg is like another form of it from what I understand. I think Ebola is like just a, a worse version of it, but they're still within like the same like philo virus group. Um, so yeah, Marburg again. Uh, so they have these green monkeys in Germany now. They're, the monkeys are like losing hair, their eyes are getting like red and infected and they thought that Marburg was killing off the monkeys. So obviously, well, they have some sort of idea Again, these monkeys are green African monkeys and also fruit bats too. So this doctor comes in and they notice that uh, the monkeys are being killed off by this virus. So they sent off the monkeys, they sent the sick monkeys off to Germany. The issue with sending them off to Germany, there's always gonna be little issues in between. So with these sick monkeys, um, there are secretly some other monkeys that are being shipped off different locations. No one knows how or necessarily who did it, but that's an issue. So now there's this village near, uh, I think it's in Kenya area, so Africa. Um, uh, it's kind of the first little village. It, it's uh, Castaner. I don't know. I'm, I'm butchering the name. but So they are pretty sure that the virus has mutated from monkeys to humans because now people are getting sick. This is also an area that has been affected by AIDS, which is still an issue, or was a bigger issue back then than it is now. Um, so now hospitals are being infected, which isn't good. So now you have these people, which they're passing around this virus from people to people. People are being turned away, this huge mess of an issue. So kind of fast forward in time, it talks about in the book about this couple. Their names are Nancy and Jerry. So, you know, married couple, couple happy American family. Uh, Nancy works at this uh, facility. 
where they have these monkeys stored and all that stuff later on. So with that, Nancy goes into full protective gear. They kind of call these things called space suits, which uh, pretty much is a giant suit you put on to protect yourself. So now they're dealing with these monkeys that are in the cages, and they're, they're grabbing the sick monkeys, they're doing the autopsy, uh, autopsies. Uh, two weeks later, so they so they have these healthy monkeys. Two weeks later, all of a sudden these sick, all of a sudden the monkeys are sick, and they don't know why, but now they know that rather than transferring from contact to contact, like, like skin to skin, now it's like through the air, which is a, another issue that they're trying to deal with. So after that, uh, or not after that, but also you have these people who are dealing with, like, if a relative dies, they're not really burying them in a sanitary form. They just, like, put stones over them and have these different, like, not, I don't know if they're necessarily rituals. But now it's like these hospitals are now to ter be turning into morgues because of the fatality in some of these towns and little areas and villages. So, again, this, uh, nuns are being affected too, so that's another thing. No one wanted to clean up, uh... There was this nun who passed away, no one wanted to clean it up. They didn't really know it was killing off the villages and people and all that. So, again, nurses are being um, infected and it's spreading from people to people and they don't quite know what it is. So, again, they're kind of trying to isolate the situation too. Carl Johnson was a guy who was known to coin the term Ebola. He named it off of the Ebola River, which is nearby from where it was founded. Fast forward kind of to 1987 of September, they find they, a Danish boy has passed away. So they get the blood from the Danish boy. Um, they injected some of the boy's blood into three monkeys. Uh, then later on, those monkeys died. So it also was presumed that the, that the young boy had also been to Kittum Cave, which is kind of like the, the, the general, what's known to be kind of a source area for Ebola. Which they don't quite know it's Ebola yet, but they know of it. So with Kittim Cave, what they do now is they send in these little guinea pigs, like actual guinea pigs, into the cave to see if they, they would contract Ebola. Guinea pigs come out clear. So now they're like, well, what the heck is going on if like people are dying and all of a sudden like they're not dying? So that was part one. Part two deals more so about the actual monkeys. So the shipment of, mon shipment of monkeys arrived from the Philippines. They're dying in large amounts. Uh, ventilation system did break, uh, which causes an issue. All these little factors that are, that are, are actually a big impact on it. So, uh, there's a sample from a monkey. Obviously, the sample's not clean. They did more examining. Uh, this doctor thinks it's Marburg. Uh, meetings are held, obviously, because, like, there's this huge issue they don't know. So, what they do, they do this testing. I don't quite remember how the testing went. But pretty much, it, the blood ended up glowing. Uh, that was that was Ebola. That signified this was Ebola. So obviously the blood from the monkeys ended up glowing, and like that's Ebola. So now they know it's Ebola, and everyone kind of goes in almost like a panic mode. So at this lab, people are just like they're taking things very seriously because they kind of have this mentality of like if one little thing goes wrong, I could obviously just like die from this. So uh, all these issues are coming up now. So you got like dead monkeys. Later on, you have like a monkey that ends up escaping. People are getting close encounters with this. Now, these monkeys, obviously, they're not nice monkeys. They're going to go out there, claw, and attack people. So, this, this people like Nancy feel like she has this huge responsibility. Like, not only, it kind of plays on the mentality of it, how, like, they have, like, this family at home, but they're also, like, trying, they're like, this is life and death. Like, this is their job. So, they don't really have time to focus on, like, the kids and the relatives and all that because they're more, like, just completely just uh, straightforward and focused on this whole situation. So it takes, a, again, it takes a toll on people both mentally and physically because they're, they're working their butt off just to try and stay safe. So uh, part three here, um, obviously there are more issues with the monkeys, mucus, lesions, issues, all this stuff. And it's interesting how this whole thing revolves around the monkeys. Now they come to terms like we need to kind of get the army involved. So you have these people who are with the army pretty much come in. They're part of like a, a command. So Jerry is like an officer in command of uh, 91 Tangos. So they get in these people, they inject them. They inject the monkeys, pretty much killing them off and rendering them like dead. So obviously it, they had like 400 something monkeys they had to deal with. So uh, like this worker Rhonda ended up 
um, her suit ended up deflating on her, so she had to deal with that. But she had just enough air to, pre uh, to prevent from the Ebola to getting to her. Um, I mean, at the end, it talks about how, like, they ordered tacos and Coke at the end of, like, a little celebratory thing, which I thought was kind of funny. So, again, in this part where they talks about, like, Nancy's dad's getting sick and a monkey escaped. And it's kind of like, uh, it's almost like a horror novel, but it's not because this is, like, what they've had to deal with. So by, by the end of part three, it kind of goes into like the 90s and obviously monkeys are, or the monkeys are pretty much taken care of. But now these two workers are sick and they ended up not having Ebola, but it was still like a panic mode. Plus you had the news media coming in trying to figure out like, oh, what's all going on? And obviously they can blow it up and make it worse like a hundred times or sound a hundred times worse than what it is. So part four comes back to Kidham Cave. Kidham Cave, from what I understand, uh, since the book is from Richard Preston, I think Richard Preston uh, explored the area a little bit and had some locals kind of talk it through. And what eventually ended up happening was it comes back to this idea of, like, they send in, they, they check out the area, rodents, bats, and comes to terms that, well, Ebola is not here. So it's it ends with this idea that it can be back, but until then... It's almost like it's, it, it has its own mentality of, like, it chooses when it wants to appear and when it wants to just go away. So, this book, I, I, learned, a, I learned a lot from it. I learned about uh, how viruses work more and how to kind of prepare in this mentality for it. Uh, definitely affected me. I, I kind of have this, like, broader idea now. Favorite parts, I enjoyed when it talks about, like, the mentality part of it and what people had to deal with. And I definitely would recommend this book to anyone who has, like, the guts for it or is old enough to maybe understand it. But yeah, really enjoy the book.